so I've been thinking about doing something a little different. And yes, I know I need to shave. So I woke up this morning and I drew a little picture. Can you see that? That's a crawdad kind of body, a little pincher. So, gonna make this. We'll see how it goes. So we got this drawing, the claw, they'll, they'll attach over here. Um, I made some copies of this original just so I got extras. Um, that's about three inches. I've got this piece of pine that's left over. I've got some balsa. Um, not sure what I want to make this out of yet. But I think to maximize and not waste this piece of wood, I mean, that would work just fine. So I think I'm gonna do that, then I can use this bottom, if we can see this, if I angle this right, I can use this bottom section to carve the pinchers out of it. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and use this. It carves all right. So I'm gonna cut one out, glue it on here, and then we'll go to the bandsaw and actually get it cut out. All right, we got our wood. We got our paper here, got our handy dandy glue stick okay I'm gonna use that area there there. I want to make sure it's as centered in the paper as I can because I want to make sure we get enough room to work with. Um, this thing is going to be rounded obviously like a crawdad. I'm going to cut into this area here eventually a slot. There will be a hook tie here and then like one big jig hook sticking up here. Then we'll weight the tail and then you know you'll be able to tie on there and then as it sits it'll sit tail down in that kind of crawdad defensive position. So that's kind of the idea and then these these will be part of the main body um, and then attached will be the pinchers that I showed you on the other piece of paper and they'll be connected um, using like some some eyelets or something. And those will be, so they'll be able to move as it's sitting there. You move it, it bounces. Those will dance a little bit. So that's kind of the idea. And I wanna leave a little bit more bulk back here so we can put the lead back here in this part of the bait. So it will tend to sit like this, you know, straight up and down. So to the bandsaw. Just gonna rough cut this out. Okay, we got it roughly shaped in. I'm gonna take that off, gonna save that. Um, next is gonna be a lot of sanding. Um, I'm gonna shape this to be thinner back here, obviously. I want this to be rounded out, this to be rounded out. Um, these, these are gonna just be thinner, obviously, but still fairly meaty. It's a pretty big piece of wood. If I would've had something a little thinner, it probably would've been a little better. But in general, uh, a lot of sanding with the belt um, by hand, you know, that back and forth motion. And I'm uh, going to probably use the actual belt sander itself, the tool, to clean up the edge and to get that general 
taper that I want back here initially before we start smoothing everything out. it's starting to lay down hopefully you can see that it's starting to lay down on that angle that I want I still want to make it a little bit more dramatic so I'm gonna grind off a little bit more yeah see that that's pretty good pretty flat there and then over here you can see it's starting to lean up which is what I want. Now we're going to take the belt sander to it and really try to start getting the uh, rounded body. And this is going to be pretty difficult because there's not a lot of meat to grab onto here. Decided that I'm gonna use the Dremel and try to refine this shape a little better. So I've got the Dremel here with a little small sanding bit. It's pretty aggressive, so I'm gonna have to be really careful. Um, I took the jigsaw and just shaped these down just a little bit so they'll fit more the size of the bait um, of the pinchers that I'm making. Just enough to put a screw eye in there really is all it is. Um, and again, we got that shape that's tilted up, so this will have more buoyancy and float up once we're done. And we're leaving just enough down here to be able to put the line tie. The hook will penetrate through here, which will cut with probably this thing on the Dremel at some point to get it in there. And then um, and then we'll do this the uh, old baking soda glue thing. Um, but yeah, there's just enough meat still left there to be able to get enough lead in here to make it, in theory at least, kind of sit like that, you know. It'll probably end up falling, but that's okay. Uh, it'll still look pretty pretty cool as it's floating through the water, fluttering down and then laying, and then you pop it up and yeah. Anyway, so we're going to do some refining with the Dremel get some of the shape cleaned up. Okay, so we got this cleaned up quite a bit. I need to do a little bit more right there and right there, but all in all, she's coming together. All right, we got as much of the refinement done as we can with the Dremel. So what I'm gonna do now, which is just not great video content, is a lot of sanding using some pretty aggressive sandpaper. I think this is 80 grit. Just to get this shaped up more in line with what I want and uh, so when we come back, I think we'll have this shaped up a little bit better, cleaned up, and ready to move on to our next stage. So I've been sanding on this. Let me get the Dremel out of the way. So I've been sanding on this, getting it cleaned up, and you can see it's starting to roll over pretty nice, and I had an idea. I took a little bit of quarter round, or half a full round, like that, and I cut it down. And what I'm gonna do, cut it in half, basically, is I'm gonna sand this smooth, and I'm gonna glue it on here, like that, to be able to give us that more rounder profile on the top, which is what we're generally after. I think I'll use this piece, it's a little bit thinner. Um, but I'm gonna get it sanded down, get it glued into place, and then we'll shape it 
to match the rest of the bait. But I think that'll be pretty cool. That'll give it that, really that crawdad look, um, you know, with that rounded top body. And uh, should be pretty easy to, to shape it up and everything. But uh, yeah, that's the plan. We got it all glued up. I tapered off this back a little bit. The front needs to be tapered off quite a bit. Um, so what I decided here, pull this back a little bit, is I got this old swim bait head. I'm gonna use it because it's got the right shape and the right line tie position. And I'm just gonna melt melt the lead right off of it using a torch. It'll melt pretty fast after the paint burns. Um, do this a little bit higher. You can see it's already melting. I'll clean this up with a little wire brush afterwards just to make sure we got everything off of there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let this cool and uh, that should be perfect to use with our crawdad bait. All right. I went ahead and cut out the two pinchers and I've got them glued down on a piece of half round here. Um, I'm going to cut them out with the jigsaw just to get them kind of rough shaped, but we're going to keep that rounded edge, which is kind of what I want on the top at least. So we'll cut these out and then we'll do a little sanding and refining and then cut out that middle section. Um, I actually might just go ahead and do that while we're cutting it with the jigsaw, but I think that ought to work pretty good to give us that rounded shape on the top. All right, pinchers ready to go. I think they look kind of cool. Um, yeah, they're ready to rock. So probably go like that. So and looking at the whole bait, looking at the whole bait, you'll see it's like kind of gonna kind of look like that when it's done. These will be connected and be ready to go. Back, gonna use the Dremel again. We've got this thing cleaned up quite a bit. It's The glue is dried. So now we're just gonna do some shaping here to taper this, this shape a little more naturally. Pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some sanding just with sandpaper to get it kind of refined a little bit cleaner, but we're getting really close now. Well, after a bit of different grit sandpaper and sanding, still left that rough edge, I like it. We're down to a point where we can probably get the hook installed. It's cooled off plenty now, still plenty sharp. Um, if we bury it grooved in about that far down and back, so we want it to somewhere in there to about here, we're going to have to cut a channel there right along the middle. And in doing that, we'll be able to inset this in just far enough, about that far, um, maybe a little bit further. And uh, that'll give us a lot of hooks sticking out, and it'll give us plenty of place to tie onto there. So I'm gonna change the bit on the Dremel, and we'll cut this sucker out. Now I could probably do this with a variety of different uh, devices, you know, whether it be a uh, 
Dremel or I've got a little air kind of uh, air tool thing. I'm just gonna draw a line right down the middle here. I'm trying to line up as best as I can. I could, uh, this will probably be the easiest and will go the deepest, the quickest, whereas using something else might uh, be a little less accurate, um, like a saw or something, because I'd have to cut all the way down and I don't want to do that. So here we go. Got where we need to get here. Whoops. Okay, there's the hook. There's the line tie. I need a little bit more coverage in the back. The front's pretty good once we get it super glued in there because we will super glue this in first. Uh, this needs to be a little deeper back here and probably just a little bit further back, but that's pretty darn close. That should get us there. So, put this here. Push it in, slide it back. I don't know, what do you think? That looks pretty good. And then as we retrieve it, it'll pull up and then flop back down with the weight in the back. It'll be just like that. I think that's going to be pretty good. Still think I could sink this down a little bit more to get some of that buried in there. Let me try just a little bit more. Don't want to overdo it. We still got to get the lead in there and everything else, but. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Just like that. So that's really cool. So we got that cut. The, the next thing we're gonna do, um, we do have to get this done before we paint it, um, but we do have to cut the grooves and the channels and the you know contours that make it a crawfish. So we're gonna do that next, but we're not gonna use the Dremel. I've got a different tool for that. So uh, we're gonna stencil everything on just by drawing it. And then, um, then we're gonna come back with a little, it's kinda like a dentist drill. And that'll help us to achieve that final look we want. Now they call this an air turbine tool by Powercraft. I don't even know if they make them anymore. One of my buddies um, gave this to me. He said, man, this could really help you um, you know, with some of your woodworking stuff. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. Well, it, the second I hook it up, it's gonna start going. So we're just gonna go right into it. You can see some of the, the grooves I've drawn on the, the bait itself. So we're just gonna kinda cut those grooves and we'll sand them and make them look pretty. Here we go. Sounds like a dentist drill. Got a little diamond bit in there. So we're just gonna sand this up a little bit. I'll probably use a brush to paint some of this just to give it a little bit deeper texture, but we're gonna definitely, definitely paint it. Um, I am gonna drill the eye sockets right now just to get that part done. Uh, I'm barely going to just kind of dot those 
uh, for the eyes. And the reason is I want them to be bulbous. I don't think I have any BBs anymore. I was looking earlier, because uh, that would be a perfect thing for an eyeball. Um, let me look a little bit more just in case, that way we can make it look the way I really want it to look. I actually found, I got some of these little brass nails. Um, I'm actually gonna use those and just drill out for the, the holes and push them in there. Um, that'll give us the coverage we want and then I'll be able to hit them with some black when we're done. All right, that's pretty bug-eyed look. They're not glued in, they're just in there. Uh, it does create some weight back there uh, or on the head because those things are brass, but uh, that's okay because we're gonna put some heavier weight in the back, back here to really draw that thing down so it almost stands up like that. Did a little refinement sanding on the claws so they're about ready. We can start to really see this sucker coming together. Um, kind of like that. I think it looks pretty killer if you ask me. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these little screw eyes. These are three quarters of an inch screw eyes. They're small ones. Um, what I'm going to do, they're closed eyes, but I'm going to open up two of them and connect, connect them. That way we can drill one into here like that. And then the other one will go into the pincher so they'll be connected like that. And then they can kind of move freely, at least a little bit freely. So I'm just going to take couple of pair of, I'm going to take some vice grips and a small pair of pliers that tapers quite a bit and um, open up this eye, or at least attempt to open up this eye, just enough to get it. That one's not going to do it. This guy will do it. I'm not trying to get too overly aggressive here. There we go. So there's that, and I just got it just wide enough. And then we're gonna close that eye back up. Just like that. So there's one. We're gonna do the same thing to another one of the eyes here. Again, just so we can connect those. The uh, pinchers. Actually open up that one a little bit more than I needed to. And it's closed back up. So there we have it. So we'll drill those holes. Um, I'm not worried about the little shiny uh, silver that'll be there once we assemble the, the final assembly of the bait. Um, but you can see how much movement those will have. Uh, just enough really. So the next thing we're gonna do. <coughs> Okay, next thing we're gonna do is clean up all this sawdust. Then we're gonna get this glued in, this hook glued in, and get ready to uh, get the lead pot plugged in so we can get the lead poured. And then we should be just about ready for the final assembly of the bait. While that lead pot is heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and drill all these spots out and get ready to drill out the spots for our weight. So first things first, let's drill out the little holes for the eyelets. And I should go ahead and punch those so I don't screw up the placement or the alignment. You should always pre-punch anywhere you're drilling just to make sure you get a more straight. Whoa, uh-oh. That's all right, we're gonna glue that back. A little shiver of the, or sliver of the wood came off. So we'll super glue that back. We'll go ahead and get this one marked. Happy accident, maybe, I don't, I don't know. Um, we'll go ahead and get these drilled. And while that glue is drying on that, we'll drill out the hole for the, uh, 
the lead that's going to go in the bait. So anytime you have a little accident like that, a little bit of super glue, um, which we're still going to coat the bait in super glue here in a few minutes to get it sealed up, but that super glue will dry really quick. It'll dry really hard, which is always great. Just got to get it lined up and not glue yourself. So that's good there. I'm going to put a little small clamp on this just to keep the pressure good. Just like that. And we'll get, that'll give it a few minutes and then that'll be ready to tap and drill again. Uh, the, the lead pot's still heating up, so we'll go ahead and drill out these other spots. Just like that. And then once that other one's dry, we'll drill it. Then we'll go ahead and uh, seal the bait as it sets right now with, with the other super glue, this really runny super glue. And then as uh, soon as it's sealed, actually we'll drill the holes first for the lead and then we'll seal the whole thing and then we'll put the lead in and we should be good to go. All right, we got the bait laid up in the vise, just getting a little bit of a grip on it. I've already got the hole kind of started. Um, we're gonna use a half inch Forsner bit, which I know seems a little bit big, but I only wanna do one hole here and we're not gonna go super deep. So we're just gonna go nice and easy here. Okay, that's about perfect. I can actually see daylight because it went through where the, the hook tie was gonna go, but that's okay. Um, so we've got that done and we only have to, we'll do one hole for that now, which is just ideal. So we're gonna glue the hook in, that way the hook is in there and out of the way. Um, and then when we put that lead in there, it won't leak through that little hole. All right, we got our super glue. We got our hook here. And then we're gonna get this glued in. If I can get the hook, up, get the hook. Um, we're just gonna put quite a bit of this in there, in that channel. And then we're gonna go ahead and um, get the baking soda and the super glue to create that final mix that will hold and cap the top of this bait. There we go, that's quite a bit of super glue. That's gonna take a little bit of time to set. It'll also temporarily act like a little bit of lubrication for us to move this bait or move that hook to where we want it. We wanna make sure we got it lined up good. Get it fully down into the bait as far as we want it. I think that's pretty straight by my eye. So we'll just let that sit there. We've got a little bit of super glue that came through the bottom, which is also okay. Actually, I'll gather up some sawdust. You can gather up sawdust and drop it in there, just like that. And that'll actually help fill in that little hole. Just like the baking soda trick, you can use super glue or sawdust for the same thing. So that's in there. That's not gonna go anywhere and then we'll backfill all those little holes and cavities with the, the baking soda to, to final, final, the, you know, final coat the opening there. Just tested the lead pot and you can see from this little bit here, hopefully it's not hot anymore, uh, that it's ready to go. So we're just gonna fill up our little chamber here. it all back in there. Okay, there it is, slightly smoking, um, but that's gonna create that weight for us. Just gonna hold it nice and level here for a couple of minutes so it sets up. And once it gets solid, which only takes, I mean, literally it's gonna take it like 30 seconds and it's gonna be solid. And then we'll be ready to go on to some final little sanding the baking soda and super glue to finalize the fill-in spots and then sealing the bait and getting ready for paint. One thing I forgot really quick is we're gonna go ahead and, and put these eyelets into the pinchers just because I want them to be 
in there and solid for when we do the painting and the ceiling. So I have actually something to grab a hold of, not the bait itself. Um, that'll be covered in super glue. So just gonna get these started. I put a little super glue on the hole. Then I'm gonna put a little super glue on the threads here. And I'm only gonna do the one side at this point. Um, Those two are there and set and um, yeah getting really close here to final assembly and painting hey I cleaned up a little bit it's not great but it's better so we got these guys we got the, the main body first thing I want to do whoa the weight actually kind of came out a little bit which is okay um, but I'm going to lightly push the hook in there to stabilize it. We're going to put some of this baking soda right on top of the where the weight was, or where the weight is, I should say, not was. then we'll clean it up, we'll sand it, and then we'll seal the bait in its entirety. All right, I got my little file here, and I'm just gonna go around and clean up this super glue baking soda mess. pretty good already. Um, I will hit the round sander and hit these grooves just to get them back the way they're supposed to look. And then here's the bottom here, which is a flat surface. Um, you can always just lay a piece of sandpaper. Um, here. Ow. Got myself with the hook. So what I was gonna say was you can always lay a piece of sandpaper down. Like the belt sander, it's flat. And you can do this. And then I can hit the rest with sandpaper just to clean that up. So that was made easy work of it. If you've got a flat surface and some sandpaper, I've seen people glue it to blocks of wood or other things, but that's one easy way to do it too. I actually cut this first groove back in. I didn't realize I wasn't recording. Um, but basically all I'm doing is I'm using this little round file Hopefully that's focusing. I'm cleaning up this outside edge. Then I'm cleaning up the other outside edge. And again, I didn't go too terribly deep with these. And then I'm just slowly cutting that groove back in across the top. So it lines back up on both sides. All right. Got all those grooves cut back in there. Kind of see that, looks cool. I'm gonna take some uh, kind of mild sandpaper here. Just go back over this one more time, getting everything good and smoothed out. All right, I do believe she is ready to be sealed up. So what I'm going to do is, we've got these three pieces, I'm going to put some pliers and some hooks and do all that so I don't get super glue all over everything. And then we'll use this uh, Star Bond. Got this off of Amazon, it's water thin, which you guys saw earlier, just flows right out. Um, but that's okay, it'll uh, really get into the wood really good. And then we'll go back to another light sanding before we paint. Now for those of you who haven't seen me do this before, uh, or any of the other bait makers out there on YouTube, it's pretty simple. You just take your super glue and you 
drizzle it into your wood. It absorbs, especially this stuff, it absorbs really well because it is so water thin like, like it says. So I'm just going nice and easy along it and I'm gonna roll the bait as we go. And this will probably take, to get it as sealed as I want it to be, probably gonna have to go over it a couple of times. any spots that don't have a little bit of a shimmer to it from it getting soaked in. So we're gonna hang this up. Same thing we did with the others. We're just gonna hang it from the hook here. And we will give it a few minutes to dry and then we'll sand it smooth. Gonna start off with a little bit of the white paint just to get it good and coated. And then uh, move on to all those cool colors. Still undecided 100% on what we're gonna do as far as colors go, but uh, keep an eye on it, we'll watch it. So I'm gonna coat these in white and then we'll be right back. All right, so here's some of the colors we're gonna be using. Of course, we're gonna be using some black. Um, we're gonna be using some burnt umber, which is a brownish color, obviously. Gonna be using orange, that's a wicked orange. And I'm gonna be using some of the pearl white. Now the pearl white's gonna be for the belly, all right, you can see that sucker is orange. So are those pinchers. We're gonna hit the pinchers one more time because um, they're a little rougher on the wood, but we're gonna hit them one more time uh, just to get them as bright as I want them. And then we're gonna come back and start hitting those highlights with the brown. Just gonna get a little drop of the black on here. And I got a really fine tip paintbrush where I'm going to um, just basically hit these grooves on this bait. Um, still looks a little tacky, but I'm just gonna take some of this paint and real easily drag it through here before we do the brown. It's just gonna go on just like that. And we're just gonna do that. Again, doesn't have to look perfect because we're going to go over it with the brown. Um, this is going to be kind of a highlight, if you will. Not too shabby. Okay, we got all the black done. You can see the detail spots there. We got the eyeballs done, like you can see here. They're all painted up black, ready to go. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use this detail burnt umber to hit the body of the bait and knock down that orange a little bit. We still want some to shine, show through, but ultimately this, this brown is going to mute some of that, especially on the back part of the tail. Gonna use it really lightly around some of these black and then we're going in and on the back of the tail, creating some shadows, if you will. And then from that point, um, we'll go back. We're gonna use that pearl white. We're gonna use some other, maybe some reds up on the pinchers just to kind of make it look really cool. So I'm gonna turn this over. Let's see what kind of spray I'm getting. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, one thing I wanted to hit was these tips. What do you think? That thing's looking pretty killer, huh? All right, so what we're gonna do with these, first of all, what we're gonna do with this guy is move him out of the way because I don't wanna paint him or her. And I'm gonna hit the tips of these. All 
All right, we're gonna heat set all this and then we're gonna hit it with a little bit more of that burn umber I ran out there at the end. And then we'll come back and look at what we've got left. Okay. So we've got that, you know, I was thinking about maybe putting some greens in there or something along those lines, but I just don't think it's necessary. I think this is really good the way it is. I am going to um, paint the, the bottom like a pearl white, and then we're gonna be done with this sucker. Get ready for clear coat. I got the pearl white loaded up here, and we're just going to hit the bottom of this base. So there it is. We're gonna get the eyes in and then we're gonna get this sucker clear coated and ready for the UV chamber. All right, getting ready to pull out those pieces. Looks like they're just about done. The dogs are in the garage helping me. Loki, see the dogs? There's Loki and Cleo, they're crazy bucks. All right, let's pull them out and see what we got. All right, I just pulled the tape off of this guy. Need to clean out this eyelet. Ooh, that drill's a little too big. Here's the right size. This has been one of the longest single, single day builds I've ever done. Um, just a super in-depth bait, you know. Um, but man, that thing looks really cool. All right, super glue. Just gonna put a little dollop on here. Just a little drop of Rooney. There we have it. Okay, let's put the lid on the super glue. Let that super glue dry just for a couple of minutes and then we'll be uh, all done. All right, here she is. If all goes well, when we t water test it, it should just sit on the bottom and hopefully this end floats up and these pinchers will just kind of move, you know, move up in the air like that. Um, not a perfect bait, but definitely unique. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, something new, something fun. The paint job turned out really cool. I don't know, what do you think? I think it turned out really neat. Thanks for watching. This thing took all day. Um, I am worn out. I would say, I'll turn over here and look at myself for a minute. I'm just, I'm beat. It's been all day. It's like 7.30 at night, eight o'clock. I don't know what time it is. You can see behind me, it's dark. I started uh, drawing at like 10, is when I kind of come up with this idea. Actually, I came up with this idea laying in bed last night, but. Uh, ultimately, I started drawing it up this morning and started building it probably after lunch and then, you know, stopped for dinner and some other things, but all in all, it, it turned out pretty cool. I think it's a pretty unique bait given the circumstances and, and everything else that's just a guy in his garage making lures. So anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support and we'll see you next video.